Welcome to Profiles in Eccentricity, a show about weirdos, with your hosts, John Fahey, Aaron Peter, and Matt Brutzon. Hello folks, welcome to Profiles in Eccentricity, it's a show about weirdos, doggone it. My name is John Fahey, joining me as ever, the kind you don't take home to mother... Mr. Aaron Joseph Pita. That's right. I am the marquee. My back is broken. <laughs> Spinal. Uh-huh. Spinal. Uh, and no, you don't take me home to mom. Unless you want her to get stuffed. Because she's already at my place. Whoa! You're jerking off again by yourself? <laughs> I'm with my boys! <laughs> no, I'm with my boys. Uh, those ads, <laughs> never jerk off alone again. No, yeah. That's how I prefer to jerk yeah, off. The best way. Yeah, try not to come. <laughs> Lady, I'm on porn. <laughs> <laughs> you won't last five minutes playing this game. Uh, I want to play for more than five minutes. <laughs> yeah. I'm not. A, like, try not to come. What do you think I'm here for? <laughs> it's like a restaurant. Our food tastes like shit. Mm-hmm. You yeah. won't eat any of this. You won't, yo. Yeah, yeah. Try to swallow this shit, idiot. <laughs> <laughs> and to his right, my left, right. good-looking son of a bitch, Thank Mr. You. Matt Rousseau. Thank you, boys. How are you? I'm doing all right. It's You're great gonna to, it's dazzle good to us. be here. It is good to be here. I missed you guys. It's good to see yeah. here. I missed it's you guys. Minute, huh? We're gonna go to a little cabin, not the cabin, but another little cabin. Mm-hmm. Spend some time. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe you guys can. You know, give us some questions out yeah. there. Yeah. Uh, you'd give us a jangle on the phone machine. Yes. Uh, maybe submit them through the internet. Yes. Do not give us a jango, though. No, 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 no. no, no a jangle. No. A jingle jangle. Uh, phone call. Give us some questions. Um, tell us some stories. Uh, we have been getting a lot of stories in about the debauched behavior. Of drunk dads. Of yes, drunk yes. dads and, yeah, drunk people in general. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's been really fun. A lot of people peeing on stuff. Uh, you know. People vaping their own piss. Yeah, 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 yeah. Really, really that, good you stuff. Can, you can pee into your jewel or whatever. Finally. Just, Thank you. I, I mean, after how many years of Water civilization? World. Yeah. yeah. Has anybody thought to pee in this thing yet? <laughs> You pee in a fire, where it's just you got to catch it. Yeah, you know. <laughs> then you get the piss steam in your face, yeah. but you don't get any of the tar uh, with the jewel. Right, the, right. You vape smooth. your piss. Yeah. 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 Well, when we're on that long road trip up to the cabin, and I got to pee. I'm just gonna let out a few drops into my jewel. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> vape it. Get high as look. fuck. Uh huh. Let Kick, out a couple more drops. Kicks it up a notch. Mm-hmm. <laughs> fucking get fucking. And by the time I get to the cabin, I'll just be a fucking genius. <laughs> That's exactly right. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, guys, uh, if you're not following us on Instagram. Instagram, please do. You can see the weirdos we're talking about. A bunch of dumb inside jokes and shit. Mm-hmm. Um, and also, shout out to our friend Melissa that uh, started uh, luring subscribers to us by offering them free Starbucks. Mm-hmm. And, Thanks, Melissa. Uh, Thank yeah, uh, mixing bowls and cool shit like that. Thank you, Thank you Melissa. Melissa. We love you. Um, and join the Patreon. We have an extra episode a week. Mm-hmm. Uh, I fucking, dude, I, dude. <laughs> oh, man, I've been psyched to tell you guys about this. I, uh, I haven't in years watched Weekend at Bernie's. I watched Weekend at Bernie's, and let me tell you, I am going to do a whole episode on Weekend at Hell Bernie's. Hell yeah. Fantastic. And then also Weekend at Bernie's, too, because I was watching Weekend at Bernie's, and I was like, this is like... If, like, if Willy Wonka wasn't into chocolate and instead he was just into, like, committing felonies, oh my <laughs> that's God. what Weekend at Bernie's is. It's the most amoral <laughs> shit show. Yeah. It is a fucking wall-to-wall nightmare. And I was, I mean, I mean, I was... Now, that's Jonathan Silverman uh, and, uh, and Andrew, Andrew McCarthy. McCarthy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I didn't, I forgot how much Bernie's alive for it. In the beginning. Yes. He's their boss. He is, and he's a total piece of shit. But think about that acting role. Being a dead guy rolling around for In most one of, and a half movies. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> like, because it looks like it hurts, man. Like, like, like he gets thrown into some shit, and it looks painful, and he's really taking it like a champ. And what other actor in the no. world has ever had? Why don't we get a reboot of Weekend at Bernie's? You know what Ooh. I mean? And we, it's Kevin Spacey. Yeah, or, because he's or, a horrible boss, right? Right, right. Or, or. Like fucking Borat. <laughs> what if Bernie was like six foot eleven? Oh my god! <laughs> what, if he, what, what if Bernie was six foot twenty? Oh my god! And, and just, uh, I mean, I was just like, he's fucked up here. Like, I was, 
<laughs> I, was, I was telling my homie Karen, she was in town, we were watching it, and I was like, oh no, Karen. No. I was like, they're stapling the toupee to his head. <laughs> I was like, and she was laughing at me because I was like, because I was looking at it from like, I'm, I'm Andrew, I'm Andrew McCarthy in real life. And I'm, I'm like looking back at the last few days and I'm going, man, I made a lot of mistakes. I mean, <laughs> not it's, calling it's 911. Just, it's just a weekend. Desecration of a corpse. <laughs> it, like, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, he's, t- he's got his Rolex. Conspiracy. Like, he's theft. Yeah. Oh, it's so bad. And the whole time these two guys just want a nut. <laughs> yeah. And they're just using it's his body. It's a sex comedy. Nut. They're trying yeah. to use it. It's, 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 a movie, it's a movie about greed, yeah. and then they barely get away with it because somebody else has lower morals, the murderer yes. of Bernie. Yeah. And then at the end, they get him, so they get away with everything they did, and then they're congratulating each other on, like, a job well done. And it's like, anyway, I'm going to do a whole Patreon about like, that. Oh. Fantastic. <laughs> but anyway, subscribe on Patreon. We do weird shit like We're that. Get a John explains it all on the moral implications of Weekend at Bernie's. <laughs> Weekend at Bernie's. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not joking. I'm going to go Please, into every every it. felony they commit in both movies, the amount of time they would serve. Oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> I'm going to, like. Uh, yes, it, legal a legal analysis oh. of the improprieties of Weekend at Bernie's. Uh, yeah, I think I'm going to like this Patreon. <laughs> yeah. Um, and you will too. Yeah. Uh, so please check us out on Patreon. Five bucks a month, you get an extra show a week, and it helps us out a lot. So uh, I'm going to turn it over to Matt. Matt is going to dazzle us with a profile. Well, we'll, we'll see. But it feels dazzleable. Dazzleable. <laughs> I'll allow it. Douglas. <laughs> Douglas. <laughs> dazzle me. <laughs> <laughs> Razzle dazzle. We begin in 1809 in New Market, England. It's 12.40 in the morning. Mm. 1809. 12.40 in the a.m. <laughs> 29-year-old Robert Barclay Allardyce, a.k.a. Captain uh, Barclay, Scottish Allardyce. man, dressed in leather breeches, lamb's wool stockings, thick-soled shoes with a silk cravat and a top hat. Jesus Christ. He steps out his door, and he's greeted with three cheers from a small group of supporters who have come to witness his journey, mm-hmm. or huh. the start of his journey. The big, he's about to embark on a journey. Yes, he... <laughs> well, dressed I'm like that. I'm about to take off on me journey. <laughs> Let me finish me meal of shock, and then I'm going to hit the road. <laughs> now that I've imbibed about a half a pint of brandy, and it's 12.40 in the a.m., I can take off on me journey. Where's he going in the middle of pitch black night? Oh, it's not that black yet. Oh. And he's going... He's coming back. He tips his hat... To the supporters, and he begins walking. His path is lit by seven gas street lights, a hundred yards between each of them. He had what was called a lounging gait, scarcely mm. raising his feet more than two or three inches above the ground. He walked half a mile to a stake down the road, then he turned around and he walked the other half mile back. Hmm. Upon his arrival at his house, he took off his jacket and lay on his couch. His servant brought him a glass of porter, and now he just had to do this 999 more times. Huh? He's got to have a glass of porter at the end of every one? Well, not not just that. That's yes, a hell of a the power walk, hour. The walk. The walk he has to do 999, uh, <gasps> a thousand. <laughs> well, I mean, the porter will kill you alone. <laughs> you do that every time. Yes. Journey of a, thou- a thousand steps a thousand begins with one step. porter. That's exactly that's very good. Now, he, you said he had a lounging gait, meaning he was a, his gait, G-A-I-T. That kind yes, of gait? Yes. Yes, he walked like a ninny. <laughs> yes. Is it? Is it, it, it sounds It sounds more like a like a... Like a like a, 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 leisure, saunter, a saunter. A leisurely gait. Yeah. I like to call him a ninny because of the way he's dressed. Huh. <laughs> I mean, I don't have any idea what any of that shit looks like. Dude, I don't even know what a ninny is. A top hat is 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 a little silly, but the the other shit... I mean, what, Lambskin what, you, breeches? Nobody knew what they were. We were, we were barely still naked back yeah, then. You know what I mean? We should have been. We didn't know what we were doing. One year earlier, in 1808, he made a wager with a friend. He wagered he could walk one mile every hour for 1,000 hours consecutively. Holy fucking shit! That's eight hours shy of 42 days. Huh? This guy's an idiot. And he said the wager was if he completed this one hour, one one mile every hour for 82 hours, or 1,000 hours, I'm sorry, 1,000 oh, hours, oh he would collect 100 guineas. If he failed, he would have to pay his friend 100 guineas. That's no. about seventy-five thousand dollars today. Oh, Italian seventy-five. Where are they going to find so many Italians? <laughs> yes, yeah, exactly. I was wondering. <laughs> huh. The average wage back then was one guinea a week. 
So just a uh, little perspective for you. Okay, so wow. he's going to do it consecutively, nonstop, back and forth for 42 days, no sleep, just a lot of porter. Well, you know, you, you, you know, he as, can take once, a nap. He's, once he's done with the mile, he can rest until the next hour. Okay. And his his his, his, his thinking, his, this was his genius plan. You start the mile right before the uh, end of the last hour, and then you do the next one right before the beginning of the next hour, so that way it's consecutive, and then you have more time to rest. Huh. Okay, so give me an idea of how much talking, or, or how much walking and how much sleeping he's doing at a time. Okay. Um, he's basically, he's, it's taking about him about 15 minutes to walk a mile. Okay. So he's, it's 15 minutes on a, from one half of the, like 45 until the end of the hour, and then from the end of the hour till uh, 15 after. Uh -huh. So it's a half hour walking, and then he gets 45 minutes, or half hour of rest. Okay. And he gets a mile in that. He gets two miles in that. Okay. In two hours. Okay. On the 10th day it rained and the road turned to mud. His neck and shoulders started burning with pain. On oh. the 26th day he fell asleep standing at the starting line. His servant had to hit him to wake him up. This is day 26? Uh-huh. So he made it that far so far. Yes. Wow. Because there's three, there are three ways of sleeping. Oh, please. There are three types of sleeping among normal folks, and uh, it goes like this: Most of us are uh, monophasic sleepers. We sleep once a day. Some people are biphasic sleepers. They sleep twice a day. Hmm. Some people, uh, renowned for needing just a few hours of sleep each night, are often biphasic sleepers who also sleep during the day. Margaret Thatcher only slept uh, four hours a night, but then she would nap every afternoon. Yeah, she looked like it. Huh. But then there are a small minority that are polyphasic sleepers who sleep in 30 to 90 minute increments four or more times a day. Holy shit. Sta sailors on long journeys often do this. Also, people who tend to get in wagers about walking. Mm. Ah. And that's what Captain Barclay did. Was he known for his uh, walking wagers? No. Or is this, just, just... this is just the... This is just the first thing that happened. All right. Sounds like a, like a drunk idea. Got way out of hand. Mm -hmm. a All that poor. porter. Yeah. July 11th, the 41st day of it. He's nearing the end. The crowd had grown so large that all lodging within 20 miles of the city was booked. At 3.37 on July 12th, he made his 1,000th mile. The crowd exploded in cheers. The city rang their bells. By then, he had lost 32 pounds and his legs wouldn't stop shaking. He immediately slept for eight hours. He woke up, he ate a meal, and fell back asleep for nine hours. Eight hours is, a, like, I mean, that is, I mean. I love a good eight. Dude, I fucking, I, I was up for two days one time, and I I, what I I was moving home from Ireland to America, and I think I slept 20 hours straight because I was up. And, like, I mean, I don't know how you could stay up for 42 days and then only sleep eight. Well, he did eat and then went back to sleep for another nine. Right. Yeah, because his fucking legs probably woke him up shaking yeah, the, the shit. He's probably <laughs> shaking awake by his own fucking the psycho nightmares. legs. The nightmares. You ever have, yeah, like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm still walking. Yeah, like, mm -hmm. night, one, fucking walking nightmares. And then nightmares, like... You ever have uh, nightmares about not being able <laughs> to sleep Joe. while you're asleep? Hey, Joe, yes. you, hey, ever, you Joe. ever struggle with insomnia within your own slumber? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You ever feel sleep deprived that even in your slumbering hours you're actually depriving yourself of sleep? Yo, Joe, sometimes I have dreams where I'm telling some dumb motherfucker like you, like, yo, man, I'm so tired. <laughs> I gotta get some sleep. Man. My spirit is broken. <laughs> My soul is broken. <laughs> Polyphasic. Uh, Poly Polyphasic spree. <laughs> One of the things they, they fuck with in the Nightmare on Elm Street series, of which you know I'm a massive fan, yes. mm -hmm. is the idea that if you stay up long enough, you start uh, micro-dreaming, like, you know, yes, subtly. It's done that driving. Yeah, uh, yeah, yes, 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 yes. not good. Yeah, your thoughts get away from you, so there's that. They fuck around with it in Nightmare on Elm Street where, like, they're, like, they're, like, walking through the park, but they're so tired that they're, like, ah, there he is, and, oh, he's gonna get me, and, like, you're, like, it's, uh, it's sleep, a nightmare. Sleep is, yeah. sleep is just... You can't, you can't fuck with it. It's pretty good. It's yeah. It's, it's gonna get you. It's going, it's going to get you. It's gonna get you. Sleep is a cousin of death. <laughs> After five days, he was back to normal, and thus, huh. and also, uh, uh, and uh, a thousand guineas richer. Well, even more than that. During his walk, he had made side bets up to fifteen thousand guineas, uh. bringing his total to sixteen thousand guineas, about one point two million dollars today. Just for walking. Uh huh. Yeah, and but it looked like a death march. 
And suddenly, walking long distances for money was the hottest thing in England. Huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> that is so stupid. I this love it. This is called pedestrianism. Whoa. Oh, my God. This is great. People uh, are so bored, it's, man. It's, They're so bored and poor. It's amazing. I get a lot of most of this is from Matthew Al Algeo's book Pedestrianism, but also I found a bunch of articles that got me into this. So he made this popular. Barclay did, but he wasn't even the first guy to do it. 1773, Foster Powell walked from London to York and back in six days for a thousand guineas. 1773. That's nearly 400 miles. He had to walk at 2.7 miles an hour nonstop to, in order to do that. George Wilson was such a popular walker that one time he entered a town and the crowd got so ruly the police arrested him for disturbing the peace. Whoa. I'm hey, I'm walking here! Yeah, yeah. yeah. I have, a, I have a, a, a very fun story about him and a Scot another Scottish man that I will be talking about on the Patreon. Very good. $5 a month. 1818, <laughs> Joseph Eaton walked a quarter mile every 15 minutes for six weeks. Jesus. Christ. Oh my God! Newspapers coined the term pedestrianism, and eventually, money, gambling, disagreements over the real meaning of walking. Oh God! And oh. the they always fuck this up. Like having one, you have to have one foot on the ground at all times. Or do you? Hey man, I, I'm, does, not, I'm does, just an amateur enthusiast. <laughs> does it still count if he jogged a little bit? You gotta walk before you can run, dude. Mm. Did is it just so eventually, the sport fell out of favor in England. They got bored with it. You don't say. But. America, England's trash heap. Mm -hmm. I guess that's also Australia. I don't know what's going on. Autumn 1860, America. Now we're going through the second industrial revolution. Baseball had yet to be organized. Travel was taxing. Boxing was largely banned in almost every state. Massachusetts, if you box, you got 10 years in prison and $5,000 fine. Whoa. In New York, spectators of boxing would be prosecuted. Jesus. Holy shit. But as cities grew, they also began building pu large public spaces for public events. Uh, the roller rink was oh. created around this time because one man, uh, his doctor told him that ice skating would be good for him and he couldn't skate in the summer, so mm. he invented roller skates. Hmm. And then... Uh, oh, and then Satan came to yes. yeah, the, the town surface. and they yeah. started doing... Uh... Loop-de-loops. Yeah. Yeah, anal. Yeah, <laughs> yeah dancing. Roll, roll bounce. <laughs> Dude, it's a straight line from anal to, to from dancing and roller rinking. No, foot loose to about. butthole loose. <laughs> <laughs> but you have to imagine, though, if uh, only uh, at most 10% of the population had money to afford a horse to ride or a carriage. Sure. Everyone's walking. Everybody's walking. And, and, so a little, some, and some people fancy themselves good at it. Yeah. But a little roller skate, all of a sudden you stop your feet moving and you're still moving. Yeah. It's pretty beautiful. You're dreaming. Uh huh. Well, plus, if you're walking from fucking London to York or whatever, you're like, thank God I'm out of London. I was choking to death in there. <laughs> you know, it's fucking like the smog is oh. like murder. And what, you got to walk in the countryside between two cities oh. and get paid? Uh-huh. Oh, wait, so I, I don't die for another few days and I get a thousand guineas? Uh, I think I'm going to like pedestrianism. <laughs> it's 1860 autumn in America. Edward Payne Weston. He, better, he was convinced Abraham Lincoln was going to lose the upcoming election. His friend disagreed, so they made a wager. The loser would walk from the Boston State House to the D.C. Capitol in ten straight days in time to watch the inaugural. Wow. Well, Lincoln won, and so Weston held up his end of the deal. His friend later said that he never would have gone through with it. Oh, that's great. But Weston... I'm glad, I'm glad I won, because there was no way I was fucking walking <laughs> to D.C. That's pretty much it. But Weston, Edward Payne Weston, was a man who knew travel. At age 10 in 1849, his father abandoned his Rhode Island family for the gold rush, mm. so he himself abandoned the family to join the Hutchinson family singers, America's original singing family. Huh. They I wrote, feel like there were a lot of original singing families. The Hutchinsons were the most popular and one of the first. Right. I'll explain that in a Patreon as well. <laughs> God, you're an expert. <laughs> They wrote and performed. Uh, I won't have you be sure it's the good name of the Hutchinsons. <laughs> How dare you, yeah, sir? But, but do you know who the original singing family was? Because it wasn't the Partridge family, I'm afraid. <laughs> well, the Hutchinsons, they would, uh, they were uh, one of the first families that, uh, one of these traveling amusements that wrote their original music. Mm. It'd be about abolition and women's suffrage, and they would make about $1,000 every performance, which is about $32,000 today. No shit. Yeah, it's quite not bad for a family of thirteen. Wow. Uh, so he. <laughs> well, yeah, it's a lot of squares yeah, in the Brady Bunch. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah it's the cube. Yeah, the cube. Brady Bunch hypercube. <laughs> hypercube. Brady Bunch hypercube. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> One of those always retarded for no reason. <laughs> no, it's, it's just, it's odds. <laughs> Melanie Hustle, I just picture. <laughs> <laughs> we have like 400 rooms. <laughs> it's a cube, you dumb fuck. <laughs> you dumb broad. <laughs> so he's with the, the family for uh, for about a year. Then he uh, one of them goes off to school in Boston. He joins him. He, f- he fails out of school. At 13, he re- returns back to uh, Rhode Island, and he becomes a newsboy on a railroad and a steamship. Then uh, in 1854, he's about 15 now. He joins a traveling circus, playing the drums and cornet. Holy shit. And then he leaves that. He says he was injured. He was struck by lightning. What the, what the fuck is with people running away from the circus and lightning and shit? There was nothing to I do mean, but get struck by lightning yeah. and join the circus back then. There was nothing. There was no trees. There was no people. Wherever you were, you, you were, were the nobody. tallest guy. You were nobody. Yeah. You were nobody lightning if you didn't join the circus, <laughs> <laughs> man. It really was the best. <laughs> it was. I mean, who's coming to town? Some fucking bums selling medicine? join another or? family? <laughs> God. Well, nothing, like, nothing was interesting. You yeah. Know? Like, nothing is interesting now. It sounds way more interesting then. You could run away. Yeah, but nobody knew anything was interesting because everybody, they couldn't... They were taking it for granted. Yeah, yeah. You're a newsboy on a ship. Yeah. Extra, extra, still afloat. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Yeah, the, there's no telegraph. I need a new one. This one, this kid the touched news? it. <laughs> <laughs> I think the captain is stooping my sister. <laughs> it's all hearsay. <laughs> <laughs> These sailors, I don't know. I think they might be a little bit funny. <laughs> <laughs> they go port to port. <laughs> Uh, he uh, so after the circus, he starts selling books door to door, which uh, is actually you know that's a life. <laughs> hey, you know how do you, there's no uh, you know no there's not a library everywhere. <laughs> sure. 1859. He's working in New York City. He's 20 now, and uh, he sends a package. He's working in New York City for some uh, some store, and he sends a package to the wrong address. He realizes this is an hour later. And he runs the package down five miles through New York City. He catches it, and he sends it in the right direction. And this is when he, quote, realizes his great locomotive powers. Oh, oh. Forrest Gump. Uh-huh. So back to autumn 1860. He would have to walk 50 miles a day for 10 straight days in order to make it to the inaugural. The inaugural then was held uh, in, like, March instead of January. Mm. Uh-huh. It was later changed to January. Maybe because it was so cold. Maybe. I'm just thinking out loud. Sorry. When we held it, we held it in January. Now, right? We, now we have heaters. <laughs> that's a good. Point. There weren't heaters back that's, then, that's... so they had to wait till March. <laughs> yeah, that's probably right. Yeah. You mean yeah. like outdoor yeah. heaters? Yeah. Huh. Yeah. All right. Are you that familiar? It was <laughs> 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 just so there'd be more people in the picture. <laughs> <laughs> They're cold out. <laughs> sure, you can understand. Obama had a much warmer yeah, yeah. <laughs> inauguration <laughs> than I did. <laughs> more people would have been there, but they died. <laughs> <laughs> Global cooling. <laughs> so when he, he does something that he probably learned from the Hutchinson family, uh, he lines up sponsors for his trip. And Gillette, <laughs> Red Lobster. <laughs> he says he says he'll pass out promotional every time ta- every town he stops in he'll pass out promotional material from them as long along with circulars from newspapers and New uh, balances. <laughs> the uh, rubber clothing company gave him a waterproof suit. What? <laughs> rubber clothing. If you're the first, what else are you gonna call yourself? <laughs> rubber clothing. Yeah. What is he sweating the death in this thing? It's like what, it's it's uh, uh, February. It's when like, the rubber you know, like clothing wrestlers company. jog in those trash bags to like sweat out the weight or whatever. <laughs> what is he wearing a rubber suit? For? I'm the human tire. <laughs> <laughs> I can, you know I can shit in this thing, right? <laughs> Most of them became sex slaves <laughs> and loved it. <laughs> Can't say no. <laughs> rubber, the rubber clothing. We lasted two years. <laughs> we did a pivot in our marketing. Now we exclusively it, only market to c- cum dumps and pig bodies. <laughs> mainly popular around inauguration season. <laughs> <laughs> Rubber glue. It took fucking four hours to get on. You just skidded into it. <laughs> Pretty much. You gotta loop up real good before you dive in head first into Spit this. Spit on it. <laughs> <laughs> you forgot the fit, the gas mask, and the piss funnel. <laughs> Helps you regulate your breathing when you're walking. <laughs> Are you jumping into a septic tank? Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, did somebody piss in my gas mask? Because I'm high as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> now, uh, uh, he, he, he gets to the starting line at the Boston State House. A large crowd is waiting for him, 
It's uh, February 22nd, 1861. But then he gets off to a tough start when a couple of the creditors got wind of his plan and he was promptly hauled off into the police station before he could begin. He owed some money. Yeah. Oh, okay. Two hours later, he was back in the starting line and set off. In six hours, he reached Framingham, a distance of 20 miles. At an inn in Framingham, there were a number of ladies waiting for him. Uh, Wait a minute, hold on. What happened to your creditors? Would he blow them all? Yeah, he was wearing that gimp suit. He just zipped open his mouth. There was. He promised them that uh, they could have some of the the money money he he was going to make. Some of the sweet ass. (laughs) So he reaches Framingham, 20 20 miles away in six hours. There's a number of ladies waiting for him because word of his uh, walk was spreading. One of them asked him to deliver a kiss from her to President Lincoln. And then she kissed him, and he said, uh, I can't promise Lincoln's going to get it. <laughs> well, actually, um, all signs point to Lincoln being a homosexual. <laughs> so I'm ma- suck his dick. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, from your mouth to the president's dick. <laughs> <laughs> I think I got this Bet rubber. you didn't know you just sucked the president's dick, <laughs> did you? <laughs> Idiot. <laughs> <laughs> this mouth is actually from a woman. What? <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> this is from a woman. You don't understand, Mr. President. A woman kissed my lips. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> so stupid. I'm sorry. That's okay. So he just, after the kiss, he distributes his literature and he walks off into the night. And he, uh, he walks even more? Jesus. Yeah, he's not done. He has to get there. The roads were rough, though. They mud, mud carved by wagons full of snow, ice, stray dogs. <gasps> he hated uh, dogs. He also, hates dogs. no signs. Yeah, you're just walking in just this basic walk. wilderness. Yeah, yeah. On no, a light, no street lights. No, he, he had a carriage with a friend that was following him mm. just in case. Weird. Kind of like boxers, you know, yeah, in the job. Exactly the same. Except instead of like being uh, physically fit and determined, they're just uh, rubber gimps. Yeah. Well, well, maybe they walking. maybe they shout encouragement from behind. Yeah, yeah, they said that too. Shut up, pig! <laughs> Keep walking. <laughs> <laughs> when he was forty miles out of Boston, he reached Worcester. And I'm that's... carrying a kiss for the president. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. He reached Worcester, and once again, as soon as he reached Worcester, he was hauled into uh, uh, jail for skipping out on a room rental the summer before. Hmm. <sighs> Oh, so they can't catch murderers, but they know about that. <laughs> they yeah. know about the... Avoid, yeah, avoid the you? towns where you own money. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. mean... But a couple hours later, uh, a couple of strangers paid his bill. Uh, he went to a friend's house. He slept for an hour. At 3.15 in the morning, he was off again. Five days later, he reaches Manhattan. There he goes to one of his sponsor's offices. He curls up on a table there, and he falls asleep. Along the way, while he was walking, crowds would gather. Word of his, his feet was spreading. They would give him water, molasses, and milk. And uh, <laughs> molasses. Yeah, again, Slow molasses. Slow down. <laughs> man, man, molasses was like a superfood. And a couple, yeah. a couple, yeah. a couple yeah. of strangers bail him out of jail. Well, they're like, well, he's walking. This yeah. guy, well, he's, he is good. He's, he's well, walking. This is the whole Forrest Gump phenomenon, you know? It's just, hey, there's, right. he's a folk He's hero. doing something. He's, I'm not doing anything. I'm, I'm breathing in coal dust. Yeah. You know, uh, Taking uh, mercury for medicine, yeah, or yeah whatever. Yeah. This guy's doing. I'm things. drinking. He's I'm drinking going, myself to death. Literally going places. Yeah, I'm not joining the circus. No, I'm, I, 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 let, I wait for people like this idiot to come through, and then I bail him out of jail. I live vicariously <laughs> yes. through his feet. Yes. Yeah. yes, very nice, Aaron. Thank you. So uh, you have to, but part of all of this, the camaraderie of everything. Um, America was a walking country. Ninety-nine percent of people were walking. God. Also. This is right when states were leaving the Union. Mm-hmm. This was an, a th- something they could forget about the fact that half the country uh, were so desperate to own slaves that they didn't want to be part of the country anymore. That's right. Also, even though they would, none, most of those people wouldn't have a snowball's chance in hell of ever owning a slave. Correct. Mm-hmm. Also, people uh, really enjoyed gambling on this. Uh, it was the, yeah. There was a big worry that people would, uh, someone along the way, would try to sabotage his, him. <gasps> Because there's eventually there would be yeah. so much money riding on this. Yeah, I mean everything's corruptible back then, especially back then. Especially you got yeah. walking. Yeah, yeah. You it, just it's... kneecap them. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Not a bad move. Yeah. <laughs> you know any walking gambles? You toenail them. <laughs> Hangnail. <laughs> Nail his toes to the ground. <laughs> <laughs> Best of luck, pal. 
<laughs> he, uh, he he gets through Philadelphia, but then south of Philadelphia, he walks 12 miles in the wrong direction. <laughs> <laughs> Idiot. <laughs> so, of course, he's not going to make the inauguration in time now. Oh, God. But he does make it to D- D.C. eventually. He misses the inauguration by four hours. Oh. But Lincoln hears about his feet. He gets to meet Lincoln. Oh. Lincoln offers him a free train ride home. He says, no, I'm going to walk. Shut up. Swear? Swear to you? No. He tells Lincoln, I'm going to walk home. And then... Fort but, uh, well, one last <laughs> thing. Hey, hey, one more. Just, just get uh, something from a nice lady. And, uh, just one more thing. Uh, if you could just, uh, Mr. President, uh, then undo your trousers. <laughs> <laughs> I get a kiss for you. Yeah. No, damn, uh, thanks. I'll walk. Uh, <laughs> I appreciate the pair of New Balance, but these look for uh, me for walking, well, sir. Just one more thing, Mr. President. I hate to trouble you, but uh, this lady back home, uh, she wants me to suck your dick. <laughs> 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 He's got that stovetop fucking pipe hat. He's got a lot of stovetop. Bearded, <laughs> Bearded, Bearded pubes. pubes. Bearded pubes. Do you think... Oh, that's yes. I don't know. That. Yes, I think he think had that bearded happened. He's pubes. president. Yeah. yeah. If anybody did, I think he. I think he got <laughs> braided it. Yeah. <laughs> he did. Yeah. Bearded, he braided. braided. Yeah. What's Just the rest in between his two nuts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Beard. He, he, yeah. He's got the Jackie Brown. Uh, he's got rat tail. He's got the Call Drogo. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Down between his nuts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> A president never only cuts his pubes when he nuts. Lincoln's. <laughs> He's, He's got the nutted. longest braid of all the presidents. He's, He's never, never nutted. <laughs> yeah. So, you better impress him. <laughs> Good thing I brought this lady's lips along. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good news, before he can even begin walking back, Fort Sumter is attacked, and he joins the Union Army as a messenger. <laughs> good God. He's disguised as a Susquehanna raftsman who is, pretends to be drunk and wanders his way through the South, delivering messages to Union uh, uh Prisons and other people. He's, he's briefly arrested because they thought he was lying about it being a Union uh, uh, spy. But he was, he was a drunken master. Yes. Wonderful. I like that a lot. He would have letters sewn into his clothes, and then he would arrive and yeah. unsew them. And puke. Uh, <laughs> I'm a real master. You don't want to get involved with that. That would be a great job for me. Yeah, yeah. he would be great. Careening from town to town, like, yeah. just being a mess. I'm like, I'm sorry, that smells terrible. Get all those thousand steps in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just puke and then be like, they're coming. <laughs> Mr. President, the union is safe. <laughs> Plus, I farted. <laughs> Let me barf on your braid. <laughs> Say, <laughs> nice break. <laughs> what does that mean? Uh... 1866, after the war, he was again in debt, and he contacts a gambler about backing him in a bet he made with another gambler. This time, the wager was that he could walk from Portland, Maine to Chicago in 30 straight days, excluding Sundays, because he didn't walk on the Sabbath anymore, because his mom was upset about that. It's Lord's Day. Thank you. Mm hmm. It was 1,200 miles, and he would make uh, 10... The the wager was for 10K. No saying on what he would get out of that, how much the gambler would get out so of it. So it's, it's 30 walking days, exclude Sundays. Exclude Sundays. Okay. Day rest. So it's, uh, you know, it's... 34. 34, 35 calendar days. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, it, it, the total prize was, was $10,000, about $161,000 today. <sighs> Uh, he was walking, by then he, he was now walking with specially made boots with tubes in them with which he would pour whiskey to keep his feet from swelling. So he had, uh, he had hidden flasks in his shoes and the whiskey he would pour on his feet or down his mouth? He would pour into the shoes and they would keep his feet from swelling oh. or chafing mm. as whiskey does. Is that, is that a thing? I guess it works. Antiseptic qualities. Uh... Right. Well, your feet are probably just bleeding, so that's probably... Yeah. Good. Yeah, I no, guess. it's good It's good for that. I mean... Drink some of that hot shoe whiskey it's not, it's after? N- it's not a pair of pumps, but it'll do. <laughs> it, it, it'll do. You know? It's not a pair of British Knights. No. <laughs> <laughs> LA Lights. <laughs> uh, every every town he went through, the, cra- the, the townspeople came out to see him. Um, in, in in Erie, Pennsylvania, everybody the Erie uh, everybody said the the quote was everybody is discussing it and all eager for the latest rumor concerning concerning the pedestrian hero. Don't from the Erie Dispatch, 
Congress meets in a day, uh, Congress meets in a week or so. Nobody talks about Congress. It's all Weston. Weston. The walking. Weston. The pedestrian. He's the man. <laughs> there goes the pedestrian. <laughs> Isn't he a, a dream? Yeah. There he goes, walking right by. Give him molasses. So he left on October 29th. He reached Chicago November 28th. It was now known as Thanksgiving because Lincoln had passed that oh, holiday. I it, didn't know that. Mm -hmm. Lincoln did that? Mm -hmm. Good for him. In Chicago, 50,000 people had lined the streets to see him. That was a fifth of the whole city. Jesus Christ. 50 police officers escorted him. A uh, 30-piece marching band marched in front of him. He made two lectures at the opera house in town, $1.50 uh, a ticket. Later, he was given a puppy as a prize, but he hated dogs. So after the guy left, he threw it out the window. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> how about, I'm what? the one that does the walk in here, you <laughs> how about, mutt. How about, giving, how about giving it to a child? He throws it out the window. <laughs> dude, dude, what? The window of what? His uh, the apartment he was staying in. God damn it, <laughs> yeah. dude! Yeah. I mean, I at least hope these you people were savages or something. They're savages. They were savages, and they walked. <laughs> they and they were on foot, barely upright. <laughs> now, while many people were big fans of this, uh, not everybody was a huge fan. This is from the Milwaukee. The haters. The Milwaukee semi-weekly Wisconsin. <laughs> I mean, they don't even do a daily uh, yeah, no, or even a weekly. weekly. Yeah. yeah, we got other shit to. <laughs> he said the name of that paper was written by a drunk Milwaukee <laughs> semi <laughs> Wisconsin. <laughs> yeah, we. Yeah, you said Milwaukee. Yeah. Well, anyway, print. I don't like walking. <laughs> <laughs> and they wrote. Sherman's march from Chattanooga to the sea was a slight affair when compared to Weston's march from Portland to Chicago. Seriously, we ask, what has Weston achieved that justifies all this fuss over him? Make a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I guess nobody else is doing it. So uh, is, it, is it a thing? Kind of. Whatever. They, I mean, come on. Like, let's be real. That was a thing if nobody else was doing it. They do say if it shall affect the... To popularize among Americans that much neglected species of exercise pedestrianism, it will be a wholly sanitary result. All right. The, right. Uh, they get both fair and balanced. Well, plus, everybody was sitting in a saloon back then or a fucking, you yeah, but know. But also, 99% of the population was walking everywhere. Yeah, anyway. to the saloon. <laughs> fair enough. Yeah. They weren't joining the circus. No. They were staying in town. Eating carpet tax sandwiches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they just opened saloons closer and closer to their houses until they were taking 60 steps a it day. Was, it was all saloons and... <laughs> Pool halls. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like, yeah. if there was anybody doing anything... Yeah. You are walking. Interesting. It was It was an event. It was a sport. Okay. Is it dumb now, Aaron? Of yes. course. That's why I'm saying this. The Milwaukee Semi-Weekly Wisconsin <laughs> Post Yeah, was a, a, a visionary newspaper. Yes. Yeah, but that was probably written by some guy that only walked to the saloon. He wasn't doing anything. Yeah, fucking... just like here. Nobody walks anywhere. <laughs> yeah. They're well. the futurists. But nobody was climbing a mountain. No, there was nothing. People were fucking climbing mountains. What year is this? 1865? Uh, right there. 1865. Nobody, yeah. There's people fucking climbing mountains. Nobody knew about it. No, uh, that fucking... time you had to walk to get the news places. It, yeah. It, it, you had to tell the kid on the ship. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like... Extra, extra. <laughs> read all about it. <laughs> The captain's fucking me. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 it was noted that uh, people back then, they don't know exactly how much they walked, but the average uh, a housewife would walk a mile a day just to get water. Right. So there was, you know, there was some built-in exercise, but also that was, if you're working in an office, you're sitting there the whole day. Sure. So people still weren't walking as much as they should be. That's exactly right, because they're all gross. They, yeah, and they were breathing in death. And yes. yes. Eating shit. Yeah, eating shit and, uh, you know, defe probably defecating, va vaping pits, defecating probably. in rivers. and Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. drinking shit stream water. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, only the drunks were surviving because the alcohol killed the yeah. bacteria. Yeah, yeah, and, um, you know, the uh, yeah the water was poison and um, everybody was abusive mm -hmm. and everybody was hammered. Yep. Mm -hmm. and, the uh, children were working. And then this guy <laughs> is walking through several states. Yep. So that's kind of... You're like, well, this is interesting. All right. The fact that this guy could survive walking for that long is probably a miracle. Oh, yeah. This, guy's, uh, this guy is a fucking specimen. Uh, yeah. I mean, walking through America at that point at, at all, just being a known person, can you imagine? Yeah. Just being like, somebody would be like, 
man, fuck this motherfucker. Yeah. Like, let's go fuck him up. Even without the money being involved, just Walking like... Walking through our town like he owns the place. <laughs> yeah. Didn't he rent a room here like yeah. a year ago? Lock him up. <laughs> Lock this motherfucker up. You know? It's, uh, it's... Let's trick him into sucking the president's dick, too. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I th- I'm, I respect it. I respect it. You walking, it, talking, cock-sucking motherfucker. It's something. He, there's... It's something. It's very dumb, and I love it because it is... This is that era that we've been talking about for a few episodes now of, like, yes. 1850 to 1930. Wow. Everything's just interesting. Like, Fucking anything goes, dude. If you yeah. can sell me magic potions or tickle my prostate or pretend you're talking to demons, mm-hmm. all right. Fair yeah. game. It's all good. It's, it's that sweet spot of, like, pre-modern mm-hmm. era, but, like, kind of post-industrial. Yeah. It's very, it's the, very the thing of uh, the, the Irish saying, what's the crack? What's the crack? What's the crack is what's the goings-on, mm-hmm. what's funny, what's new, what's scandalous, like, what's the gossip? Yeah. What's new on the street? They say Weston's gonna be here in two days. That's the crack. All right. You know what I mean? Did you hear this motherfucker made electricity and you can make dead bodies sit up with it? That's the crack. That's the crack. You know right what I now. mean? Did you hear that uh, they got this dude to suck the president's dick? That's also the <laughs> That's crack. That's good crack. You know what I mean? That's good crack. Yeah. It's good stuff. I love good stuff. So Weston was always in debt, but he realized he had found his calling. And uh, he started touring the country, walking on indoor roller rinks for hours and hours on end. People would pay to watch him. He would wear ruffled shirts, and he would carry a riding crop. And sometimes he would play the cornet while he did it. A band would often be playing as he was walking. Manhattan, 1870, he wins a bet of $2,500 by walking 100 miles in under 24 hours. Hey, that's not bad. 100 miles? In under 24 hours. That's a good walk. That's fucking strong, dude. Yeah. Hey, man's a professional walker. And he's got the riding crop. He's beating his own ass with it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's fucking himself. He's wearing, wearing a frilly shirt. <laughs> I, wish I, like, I wish I had my rubber suit. He's <laughs> like, get to step in. Get to step in, you ninny. <laughs> Coming his pants so hard. <laughs> riding crops, roller skates, rubber suits. Oh, he God. loves it. He loves it. He wa- uh, I wish I could Eddie, stop to Eddie fuck Eddie one Izzard, of these girls. <laughs> Eddie Izzard ran like 20 marathons in a row, 20 days in a row or something. Yeah. yeah, but running was not in no, style. No, running yet. was there for was no run- There was Africans. no running. There was no running at this time. <laughs> no, no, running did not exist. It no. was purely it was not, walking. Running had not been invented at this yeah, point. Yeah, it was not right. sport sportsmanly. You would choke on the air. Yeah. Uh, 1871, he walks 400 <laughs> miles in five days, taking home $5,000 in wagers and gate receipts. It's about $105,000 today. God damn it. Five days. He takes home $105,000 walking 400 miles. Walked like this. Well, uh, let me give you a description of how he walked. All right. Much was made. This is from uh, Pedestrian. Uh, Much was made of Weston's peculiar stride. Oh, wait, sorry. Much was made of Weston's peculiar (laughs) stride. He swung his hips with each step, not unlike a modern race walker. One reporter wrote that Weston walked with a splendid sweeping stride that carries him over the road like the wind. Huh. Others, however, were less complimentary, saying his gait was, quote, wobbly. <laughs> One observer said Weston's legs were, quote, Weird. put on like two toothpicks stuck into opposite sides of a, of a potato. What? <laughs> Many years later, a New Yorker named Alfred Meyer, who as a boy attended one of Weston's walks around this time, recalled Weston's form, quote, as he strode around the track, Meyer wrote, I noticed that Weston accentuated, accentuated each third step, visibly accelerating his speed by doing so. The method brought the extra effort alternatively on the left and right foot with a respite in between since the acceleration fell in the fourth, seventh, and tenth step, and so on. He carried in his hand a little whip with which, which we, he occasionally switched to sturdy his little legs. Hmm. Huh. Also, he added to the boys of my generation, Weston was a hero. Huh. <laughs> that <laughs> motherfucker could walk. <laughs> he could, I've seen people Ooh. walk before. Uh, Milwaukee, Daily Sentinel, Wisconsin. Semi weekly. He walks like he's got a piss and shit. <laughs> and I don't like it. <laughs> and it stinks. But also, <laughs> to be fair, <laughs> it's pretty nice. <laughs> Counterpoint. <laughs> <laughs> Me, you ignorant slut. <laughs> I like watching men walk in frilly shirts. Sue me. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you got rubber pants? Mm. These pants smell like shit. <laughs> Gross. Can you imagine the smells coming oh, out of It's pants? like natural love rubber, too, oh. like from a tree. Yeah. Oh. It's no good. 
December 1874, he's now 35, he's in New York, New, Newark, New Jersey, and his next attempt is to walk 500 miles in six days. The crowd gets so unruly, the mayor threatens to call the, in the National Guard. <laughs> I'm gonna do it! I'm gonna walk 500... You no! won't! You won't! <laughs> People, settle down! God damn it, I'll call in the fucking National Guard and have you all shot! He just takes... He's a, walking takes nowhere! Yeah. He's, He's just like, like uh, well, I'm gonna do uh, it. I'm You're walking into a jail cell, <laughs> Weston, you ninny! You're walking on thin ice, you homosexual! <laughs> <laughs> now take off that frilly shirt and give your mayor a blow job. Bring in the riding crop and the rubber suit. You're gonna walk right into my private quarters. <laughs> Word on the street is that you've got a package from me. From a lady. Oh God, that so. <laughs> So where is he walking the 500 miles to? And he's, no, he's walking it in a roller rink. But would he walk 500 more? Yes. <laughs> oh, oh, good oh, question. Oh, oh, yes. Very good question. We're not even we're not even near that yet. <laughs> Thank you. Thank so, you. So so he's just doing it in, it's inside not, it's of not, a roller rink. I'm going to do 506 days. And and sometimes they would be really small. In order, so in order to do a mile, you have to do 50 laps. So these people were so shook up about the idea of this guy walking around a roller rink that they were rioting. Yes. And the mayor was like, I will bring in the National Guard into what city again? Newark. I mean, Newark. Which needs the National Guard if any city does. <laughs> Yo, this motherfucker's <laughs> about to fucking set it off. Bro, I swear to God. Yo, check me out. I'm going to fucking burn my house down if this motherfucker walks 500 miles. In six, in six days? If he sets one more Bro, foot, I'm going to fucking lose I swear my to God. Shit. Oh, my God. Oh my. With that gate, with that stroll of his, right. with that frilly, with the rubber pants on oh, me. Have you, if you, you think you've seen walking. I will burn this city to the ground, bro. I'm gonna flip carriages over. <laughs> I'm gonna uh, light bottles of booze on fire. Well, fuck a horse. One gambler was arrested for throwing a chemical on the track. No. A yes. chemical? Yes. A chemical? Yeah. It's piss. It's probably, it's probably jewel piss. <laughs> but he does it. With half an hour to spare, he walks his 500th mile. Yeah! The New York Times calls it the most remarkable feat on record. Spirit of the Times... He's a humbug. New York sportsman, any displays he's connected with will be understood by anybody possessed of sense enough to seek shelter when it rains, to be mere mercenary exhibitions and no tests of real merit. I'm sorry, what does that mean? Were they shitting on him? They were shitting on him. All right, yeah. New York Times really says this is the greatest thing we've ever seen. New York sportsman says, if you're smart enough to get out of the rain, you can see that this is bullshit. Hmm. Huh. If you're smart New York Times, this is the best thing ever. New York sportsman... This is bullshit. This is yes. What were the other sports though? Well, there weren't any. Uh, so the New York sportsman is shitting on the only sport. I mean, there's baseball, but it's not organized. Uh, you no, know, there's uh, there's boxing, but it's not. You're not allowed to box. Right. There's like I don't know archery and shit. All right, that makes a lot. That, that makes of a lot of sense. Archaic so you're New York sports. sportsman. You know there's good sports and and there's and then, hunting. And like then you in... see the one legal sport right. is some bullshit. Uh, you know, like if you are real sports, you gotta see these Indian guys and Irish people beating the shit out of each other with their yeah. bare knuckles. Yeah, if you're like, if you're like right. into baseball and and bare knuckle boxing, and then you're like talking about like tickling contests, yes. you're like, hey, get the fuck out of here. Yeah, <laughs> get your shit and get the fuck out of here, Wes. Yeah, get the, walk the, the out fuck, of here. Yeah, walk yeah. out. Why don't you walk into traffic? You yeah. fucking piece of shit. <laughs> you don't know what traffic is yet, but <laughs> yeah, your kids are gonna love it. Trust me, your kids are gonna love it. So dumb. Oh, I just fucked. I realized I had the whole video fucked up. All right. Anyway, <clears throat> where was I? Mark so, the time. Fifty-seven minutes. No, you guys look great. Oh, I love the sound of that. You like that crack in a piss? Yeah. Drink. All right. So Drink. now pedestrianism is catching on with the whole country. There's ads in papers of people seeking challengers. Companies are holding events where they're putting. They're asking their employees to to race. Uh, now there's even inventions. Walking alone again? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Would you mind walking me to the bathroom, please? <laughs> you won't last five minutes walking this way. <laughs> you bitch. You limp ankle bitch. <laughs> you crippled bitch. <laughs> there it goes. It's there it goes. He was there it goes. No, I got a, a booger bubble. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which is your nose spitting up. <laughs> a booger bubble. A booger bubble. Disabled bitch. 
<laughs> you differently abled bitch. <laughs> you bedridden bitch. <laughs> uh, there were even inventions now. Because this was so popular, people were inventing things for them. Uh, there were shoes with springs in them. That ah. was another one. There's also uh, the pedometer. Not to be confused with the pedometer. The pedometer are, is how much of a pedophile are you? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but the pedometer, breaks. the pedometer was invented uh, because of pedestrianism. Mm. Oh, just if you were lying about the steps. <laughs> yeah. yeah, these motherfuckers, man, they can ruin any sport. I swear to God, they ruin boxing. They, they like, you know, the outsiders, the critics, yeah. the judges, mm -hmm. the gamblers. They ruin every honest sport. They suck so bad. Yep. Yeah. Sports don't suck. You think sports suck? No. No, they don't. Sports do not suck. Sports don't suck. Everything People around, around them suck yeah. so bad. Yeah. Fans, the worst. The absolute Fans worst. Fans are the worst. Mm -hmm. uh, everything. I went to a. Sorry, I went to an Angels game. Yeah. And uh, game's fine, but like every time some it's like it's July, so they're doing like Christmas in July for some reason. So like everybody's <laughs> got their famous part of the Christmas song, and like everyone's got a song when they come up to bat, and then like every fucking oh, inning is God. like a sponsored thing. It's just yeah. like, Jesus fucking Christ. Let me watch the guy hit the round thing with the long thing and run to the square thing yeah. in the diamond thing. Mm -hmm. I don't need to hear about everybody's favorite Mariah Carey song yeah. or how this yeah, fucking Cars 911 sponsors yeah. the seventh inning stretch. Yeah. Jesus Christ, there's so much extraneous right. bullshit. <laughs> this, Can't imagine this, this what kind bunt, of... This bunt is sponsored by Chester Cheeto. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Whatever, like... Yeah. A fucking nightmare. It Fans, is. hate them. Yeah, there's owners. Every, every everything around the sport is a complete disaster. Yes, and and the writers, the critics, every every single thing. It yeah, sucks. they're all they're all fucking moochers, takers with no talent. And all every, all all of them do is blame the sport. And, oh, and the athlete. Yeah, they blame the athlete, the person doing the actual work. Yeah. The only person that's worth a fucking <laughs> the person God who worked damn. the hardest to be yeah, there. Yeah, against mm. all odds, yeah. likely coming up from shit background oh, yeah. to become the uh, pinnacle of the sport. And you assholes are telling them that they aren't shit so that you can make maybe almost as much money. You yeah. can't throw and hit and you're going to yeah, fucking I mean, get so on this People, people have having serious fucking. conversations about, <laughs> at bars about whether it's LeBron or, you know, Syndergaard. Or what the fuck? It doesn't, doesn't matter. It, it's people being like, you hey, know, I don't like him because blah, blah. It's like, who the fuck are you? Yeah, no fuck. You're hack. nobody. Fuck off. Go Sorry, take a rant over. No, but, yeah. no, but seriously, fuck Can't off. Can't imagine yeah, these shit. good, hardworking walkers being taken mm -hmm. down by these fucking slanderous. Right. Mm hmm. The uh, Virginia Quarterly Review noted that in this time in America, quote, it seems as if the muscles of the nation were making one final, vast collective effort before being replaced by the internal combustion engine. <laughs> <laughs> Mark Twain and a friend, they uh, they decided to get in on it. They decided to walk 100 miles from Hartford to Boston. Uh, they gave up after 10 and took a train. <laughs> and he said we didn't want to embarrass him. That's why we did it. No, that's yeah. nice. Very good. America was a land of opportunity, and all you had to do was just walk. And so, Dan O'Leary, Irishman. Hell oh, yes. Fuck. Family ruined by that potato plague. Oh. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. That p fucking... Potato plague. Yeah, I mean, it's just... They were falling the, it, from the sky! It's just the British hiding him from you. It was. Yeah, I know. He comes over to America in steerage. They're in the ground. <laughs> <laughs> My potatoes are hidden. He arrives in America in steerage. He's living in Chicago. Chicago, also the place where the Irish woman's cow burned the city to the ground. Mm. Right? The Irish were not welcome in Chicago. After the cow burned the city to the ground? Uh-huh. Uh, you're going to have to explain that. Do you remember the Chicago fire? Yeah, uh, I know that. was supposedly started by an Irish woman's cow. Uh -huh. And therefore the Irish were did the he, problem. Did he light one of his farts on fire? <laughs> he kicked over her lamp, oh, according to a story that never happened. So leaving the lamp near a cow was the cow's fault? Yes. Yeah. Uh-huh. Well, no, no, it was the Irish woman's fault. It was fault. the woman's fault. Oh, right. Well, yeah. Yeah, well. And that burned all the city. Don't be ridiculous. Also, <laughs> otherwise it would have been the Jewish woman's cat yes. <laughs> or some other fucking mi yes, minority. Ex exactly. This cat was circumcised. <laughs> 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 the, cat, the, the, the cat in question was cut. <laughs> the cow had to be slaughtered. Jesus Christ. <laughs> it's an awful thing. It had to be put down. She oh, had no idea. Stepped into, burst into flames. <laughs> that was only the beginning. Then she ran madly into the city. <laughs> a flame, of course. Of course. Yeah, setting yeah. everything alight oh, in a yeah. path. If only she was walking. <laughs> <laughs> the conflagration would have been much more manageable. 
Dan O'Leary, he's, uh, he's in Chicago in 1873, and he hears all these men talking about Weston. And they keep saying, only an American could do that. And he says, guys, I could do that. And they laugh at it, and they say, Irishmen couldn't do that. <laughs> So the next year, July 1874, he rents a roller li- rink and he announces that he's going to walk 100 miles in 24 hours with only ice water and brandy to assist him. <laughs> yeah. He finishes his 100th mile in 23 hours and 17 minutes. Mm-hmm. A month later, he does 105 miles in 23 hours and 38 minutes. Then he calls out West and he says, I will beat you. I'm coming for you, brother. Race me. And Weston says, uh, well, make a good record first, buddy. (laughs) He says, quote, make a good record first and meet me after. So for him. We're going down to the Moonlight Roller Way. You'll see us there July 31st. (laughs) The cream. (laughs) The the cream. (laughs) April 1875, O'Leary rents a roller ring in Philadelphia. And he beats Weston's 24-hour record by walking 116 miles. Hell yes! A month later, he beats Weston's 500-mile record by two and a half hours. (laughs) You're only a bitch! You're only a fucking bitch! (laughs) I've never walked a day in my life! (laughs) Jesus Christ! I've been getting around by crawling in carriage! (laughs) Jesus Christ, it feels like I've been walking on broken glass. (laughs) Walking on on broken glass. (laughs) But Weston, you're only a fucking whore, yeah. (laughs) From the Philadelphia Times, quote, Weston will have to look at his laurels, for all of a sudden, in the height of his fame, a competitor springs up who bids fair to throw his best feats into the shade. This wonder bears the common enough name of Daniel O'Leary. Yeah! You better look in front of you, you better look behind you, you better look to the left, you better look to the right, you better look down, but every time you look up, I'm right on top of you! Do you understand, Weston? You can't! <laughs> I'm only messing with you, Jesus Christ. Yeah. But I'll beat you, you bitch! <laughs> you see, the thing with the fellow with Weston now is he has no testicles. So he's got he's got he's got a bit on me, you know I what I mean? He's, he's, he's got, more he's, he's got, he's got, Now me, I've got goat testicles, no, and now you Christ, think it's way it down, but I'm feeling like I've got a certain thing. Figure. My problem is that the the leg hair goes through the denim, you see, and the testicles are so big, there's a high friction. Now, I'm what... working at a disadvantage with, with me huge, savage Irish <laughs> cock and whatnot. It's weighing me down. I'm just, like, I've got three legs yeah, I've Jesus got to walk. Christ, i got a feral cock in my fucking... <laughs> Could you imagine? <laughs> anyway, go on. Uh-huh. Go on with the walking. <laughs> the die had been cast. The two legends of pedestrianism... They had to meet now. November 15th, 1875, Chicago's Interstate Exposition Building. $500 and half the gate receipts to the winner. Jesus. 500 miles, first to 500. The floor, tan bark. It's pressed mulch. Huh. It's also that thing Brinkley was shaving. How did they train for it? No one's really sure. Uh, drinking? Drinking, we- absolutely. Weston, quote, plain food, no stimulating liquors. That was it. Plain food, cornflakes, <laughs> no jerking off, yeah. loser. Other pedestrians would, quote, walk or run six to eight hours a day, roast beef, roast, and boiled mutton or chicken, and limited vegetables and stale crusty bread, washed down with a bitter oh, ale. Terrible Some idea. Keto. They are yeah. not, they had no idea what they were doing. Oh, absolutely not. You know what I'm going to put in my gut is mutton. Yeah, that's uh, yeah. going to make me walk. Oh, it's a hard, It's a hearty meal. Fast, yeah. yeah. I mean, this. Try it out. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, 500 miles is the only thing getting mutton through your system. Yeah, I think, <laughs> you know I, think, I think you got. I think that's the only way to digest mutton. <laughs> Actually, I don't think there's. I don't think you can digest it. Oh no! Other, no, no well, without no, no. walking <laughs> no. half of a thousand miles. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, the rules were simple: heel to toe. The race had to pause at midnight on Sunday because of the blue laws. Heel to toe. Well, I mean, the, your your heel couldn't. Uh, there always had to be one part of the foot touching the ground. Otherwise, oh, it's running, yes. John. Yes. Okay. All right. 50 cent admission. Admission was 50 cents. And uh, d- their, their outfits wore, uh, were this. Weston wore a black velvet suit with black boots, a silk sash draped diagonally across his chest, a riding crop in his hand. O'Leary, more of a thinking man. Is he, he fucking Mr. Peanut? <laughs> what? <laughs> he, O'Leary wore white tights, a tank top, and a brown knitted jacket with walking shoes. In each hand, he held a pine stick. They absorb, they, and this is from O'Leary, quote, they absorb perspiration and keep the hands from swelling. No shit. So he had these, but... They were very small, very small pine 
uh, 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 sticks. That so, did, did, were they were they like walk? Were they touching the ground? No, no, no. They were they were More about like hand grips. size. Well, an, yeah, Irish, an Irishman can't walk without a shillelagh of some yeah, kind. Yeah, exactly. you know what I mean? It's it's uh, it's uh, a <laughs> shillelagh. I've got a dual shillelagh system. <laughs> yeah. No, of course none of it touches the ground. Thereby uh, uh, right. disqualifying me from the the contest. But I do have to have a stick in my hand at all times. Okay, so so what color was was Weston again? He was all black. He was wearing a black velvet suit with black boots, a silk sash, in the black the corner. Cross. The white guy, <laughs> and he is—he looks like the guy, Johnny Walker, right? Like, is that where? Is, well, are you going to tell us that that's where the Johnny Walker label comes from? No. Um, okay. At that point, because that's what they're doing. They're wearing that fucking outfit. Yes. Going, eh. Yeah. At that point, he was not sporting his his uh, beard. He uh-huh. would later sport a beard. Oh. But here's a picture of the two. Oh, all that Lincoln comes. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> Here, here's here's the uh, advertisement from uh, 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 from their walk. Oh, Larry V. Weston for one hundred pounds. That's a, it's a different. Uh, that would be a different race. The largest amount but, of money ever walked for in the world. That's a that's a later race. We are not uh, there. Yet. We still have a, a race ways to go. Good God! All race right. wars. But that's what they look like. Oh, this is so stupid. These guys really look like athletes. Um, I mean, odds are they were the healthiest people. Uh, yeah, no, you're right. Yeah, you're time. right. I mean, the healthiest world. white people. Yeah, white people. Well, I mean, if you're walking on water and brandy, you're probably not healthy at all. But you're probably just, uh, you know, immune to, uh, you know, how you're destroying your body. Yeah. Yes, in that moment, especially. Yeah. I mean, willpower. It is will. I mean, there is like you know something to kind of like the working man's willpower, without a doubt. You know, and that is also you know you know Chris Rock has that joke about the lower you are on the social ladder, the better, the better boxer, boxer you are. You are. Yeah, yeah. It's always been that way. That's yeah. why I made that joke earlier about the Irish people and the red man. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, now there, while you had to always have one foot on the ground, there was no rules about saying which direction you could walk. So if you wanted to stop halfway through a lap and walk the other direction, you totally could. Could you walk backwards? You could walk backwards if you wanted to. Oh, uh, uh, weird. Uh, 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 it's just, but no one really ever did that because it was, it would just fuck you up. Could you take two steps forward and take one step back? Yeah, but then that wouldn't be. That'd helpful. be opposite the track. Now, uh, the week before the race, O'Leary said that he had, he announced that he was going to cover 100 miles in the first 18 hours. That's more than five and a half miles an hour, and uh, he was probably just doing this to get in Weston's head. Uh, and then right before the race, he said he wasn't going to do that. And Weston said, Weston, his, his, his plan forever in walking was, I will just walk at the same space, uh, pace forever, and eventually I will win. And that was always his plan. And that, uh, so, when the race started, O'Leary uh, took off with a quick pace, and he pulled out to a big lead. Uh, he completed his first mile in 11 minutes and 3 seconds. It took Weston a minute longer to do that. And by the end of the day, O'Leary was in a good lead. And he would never relinquish relinquish that lead. Uh, he was ten miles up after the first day. Hell yes. Weston was like, he's gonna wear out. It was and, all about walking. But by the end of by Saturday, by the end of the week, O'Leary was up by thirty miles. Oh my god! And it was very clear that he was going to. No win. way. Thirty. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Holy fucking shit! He was also about ten years younger. Can't feel a thing. <laughs> he was ten years younger. Mm. Now. This place sold out almost every night. This was the biggest story in Chicago history at that point, basically. Every single night, people were clamoring to see these guys walk. And by the end of it, they were both basically dead on their feet. And at 7 p.m., this is from the book, at 7 p.m. commenced a rush almost unparalleled. The expo was surrounded by a surging mass of humanity eager to procure, procure tickets. Excitement could have not reached a higher pitch, for it seemed, for appearances indicated a wild delirium of the throng that beseeched the building. There were 5,000 people crowded inside the building by that point, uh, and that was probably the, the, as, as much as they could hold. And they were just they were yelling and screaming, and then when, uh, when O'Leary won, uh, they, were, uh, they just they, they carried him around the track, and uh, then he went back to his hotel and relaxed. Huh. Kicked it. Chilled out. And so Payson had lost. But mm-hmm. you know what he did? He went over to England. And started walking there. He started walking there. Yeah, they're, they're, wa- they're low-level walkers over there. Oh, yeah. There was a man in England who, uh, William Perkins, he'd recently walked eight miles in an hour. Hmm. Which was a, a feat. Uh. So Weston, Weston uh, challenged him to a 24-hour race. 
This will be held in London's agricult- Royal Agricultural Hall, a.k.a. the Aggie. The Royal Agricultural Hall? Yeah, there's a whole history behind it. Uh, it was... They would have like they would have like farm shows there. Uh-huh. One like year, the par- Parthenon full of pig shit. Basically, one year, every conceivable <laughs> animal. It always would get swamped with like gas. One year, a Swamp bunch gas. of cows died, oh, and God. the sheep didn't because the cows were slightly taller, and the gas wouldn't. Oh, for Christ's sake! It was just sake. it was a mess. Nobody of a place. knew shit. Nobody knew shit about shit back mm-hmm. then. It was yeah, just, ah, we forgot that cows yeah. fart and and it pigs was su- survival of the dumbest. The lambs that were too short to get murdered. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> like those baboons. Did I tell you about the baboons? <laughs> what? So there used to be. Uh, there were some baboons in Africa, and still know, baboons are real cunts. You know that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. fucking assholes. Yeah, yeah, they gotta fucking go. Fucking pieces of shit. <laughs> they gotta, they gotta Big go. Fat fucking ass. And uh, but you know, there's like there's like alpha baboons, right? Sure. So they were at by this like resort in Africa, and these fucking maniac alpha baboons would always like go rub, uh, go raid the the trash from the right, resort, right, okay. and they like they. They'd shut out all the other cuck beta male baboons and women and children, and they'd get all this like sweet, hot, you know, uh, yeah, Choco Tacos, Choco Tacos, yeah, right. it's it, fucking big sticks, yeah, hot Cheeto bags, all that shit. Uh, they'd eat all the sweet human trash. Oh, fuck, they'd lick the fucking shake of the bag, you know, Doritos, fucking Cooler Ranch. <laughs> They're living high on the hog, fucking Slim Jims. Oh, yeah, brother. <laughs> <laughs> the cream does rise. <laughs> sometimes the cream curdles, John. <laughs> it and does. Here, here's what happens. All the betas. There was a fucked up batch of food, human food trash, and yeah. all these alpha baboons raided it, and they all died. Yeah. And it changed the baboon culture in that area. Yeah. Because it like it weeded out all these hyper aggressive male baboons, and right. now like all the fucking like uh, beta cuck baboons are running the show. Right. And it's like a much more peaceful baboon economy. Yeah, oh, because every fucking male baboon was like Niles from Frasier. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Frazier's dad kicked the can because he ate all the shit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Frazier's not in the picture. Oh, yeah, with that dumb dog. <laughs> oh, fuck, get out of here. Fuck out of here. Comb over. Are you <laughs> kidding? Fuck, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> <Beast>. <laughs> Niles, but Niles baboons rule the day. That's exactly right. <laughs> Niles from Frazier. <laughs> fuck this guy. <laughs> <laughs> I never understood. Like they might be bringing Fraser back. No. Yeah, 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 maybe, maybe, maybe. How did that guy in the that chair make those two guys? <laughs> I know. Well, that's the gag. Yeah, that's the gag. Uh, I'm the dad from the honeymooners, and and well, yeah. you're led to believe it's the mother. Yeah. Right. Is right, the right, idea, right. I think. Yeah, yeah. I would guess. I don't I haven't watched enough of the show. I watched a shitload of Cheers. Love Cheers. Cheers great. Frazier was all right. Cheers fine. Yeah. Uh, I'm working class America and these are my two ninny British children. Yeah. I love it. England, 1876. So William Perkins was uh, w- the English up and coming walking man. Um, they're in the Royal uh, Agricultural Hall. Perkins is on the outside track. Uh, bare floor. Watson's on the Weston's on the inside track. His floor is a mixture of gravel and loam. You know, loam. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Soft. It's clayish. 9 a.m. They arrive. Weston in knickerbockers, leather leggings, ankle-length boots, and boots in his riding crop. Perkins is wearing an athletic costume of a white Guernsey with black drawers to his knees and uh, thin, w- thin slipper shoes. Guernsey. A Guernsey. Was that like a leotard or something? Yeah. It's like a muumuu. He's got leggings, basically. <laughs> it's like a muumuu. <laughs> no. It's like a, yeah. Yeah. 9.25, the race begins. 9.25 p.m. Uh, By 3 a.m., Weston is already behind four miles. Oh, God. Asshole. He can't even walk. 3.45 a.m., Perkins takes a break. He eats uh, loin chop, loin mutton chop. (laughs) Fucking asshole. He drinks a pint of Burton Ale, and then he immediately throws them up. (laughs) Ah! I just like the way it tastes coming up, going down, whatever. Psych, loser. <laughs> I'm light as a feather. Uh, I'm fucked up. I got bo- I- my body dysmorphia. <laughs> I'm going to walk forever. I'm going to walk behind you in your dream, motherfucker. <laughs> I'm going to eat this puke later. <laughs> I'm just fucking with your thikey, motherfucker. You don't know what Tholoft is, but 
<laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> By noon the next day, after only 15 hours of walking, Perkins retires. Oh. He'd only walked period th- from the game from or- the whole thing. He had walked <laughs> 65 miles. His feet were caked with blood, and they couldn't. They could barely take his socks off. He had a fever. Oh, oh. God! By then, though, Weston was already ahead, and he kept walking. After 24 hours, he had only hit 109 miles. But I'm the crowd, finishing my walking. The crowd picked him up and carried him around for another lap on his shoulders. <laughs> the London Sporting Times wrote, "Quote." One of the greatest pedestrian meets on record. Shows our American cousins are spry in other matters besides the manufacture of cocktails and wooden nutmegs. (laughs) Shows that our American cousins are a little talented at more things than mass shootings and being obese. (laughs) Pretty much. Pretty much. They can also walk a little bit because they got springs in their yeah, shoes. You like gotta give them these. They know how to walk. <laughs> I had to look up wooden nutmegs, and wooden nutmegs are a thing. Is a trick because like the English would go over there and they would get watches and they'd be like, these watches. They told me these watches suck, <laughs> and they'd be like, oh, I would love to have a, a nutmeg, and and someone they would buy it from a guy, and a bunch of the nutmegs would just be a piece of wood that was carved into a nut. Without actually being a nut. Oh, counterfeit nut. <laughs> counterfeit nut. <laughs> Fake nut. Counterfeit ejaculate. This is not nut. Yeah. No. This is wood. Yeah. <laughs> the thing is about American nuts, nuts is they're tough. <laughs> yeah. they're really got tough. Really got a, they're tough. It's crack. a tough, tough nut. <laughs> you know, you can smoke a nutmeg, get high. Is that right? Yeah, it's nutmeg is psychedelic. Go. It's a psychedelic? Yeah, in a high enough dosage. Sounds terrible. No way, really? Yeah. What does it make you see? Uh, nut. <laughs> Want a nut, Meg? <laughs> <laughs> I'm nut! I'm nutting! Oh, hold on, I'm a nut, too! Can we announce that next week's going to be a media? Yeah. Can we just say it? Oh, next yeah, week? yeah, let's do it. We're going to do, an, oh, do a media episode. We got some porno clips. We got some dumb shit. We got Randy Macho Man Savage, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got, we got uh, some dumb movie stuff, but... It's, we're long overdue for a media episode, yeah, folks. Yeah, so yeah, we, yeah. we want to like share with you some of the shit that we're I'm nine. joking about all the time. <laughs> yeah, it's really gonna be fun. It's gonna be very stupid. It's very, 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 very stupid. Oh, I love to nod. 1876. Still, one week after this, uh, Weston has a new challenge. He announces a new challenge to himself: 180 miles in 48 hours. His competition would be Alexander Clark, a novice who quote. Underwent no preparation. <laughs> it was a rout. By the end of it, Weston played. Uh, he, he was he was just walking by himself. He played "God Save the Queen" on his cornet as he walked. He the was crowd doing the werewolves it. of London. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he hit 180 miles in 47 hours and 40 minutes, and the Aggie was sold out the entire time he was doing it. People just watching motherfuckers walk. Can you mm-hmm. imagine? And he's just like showing off because this guy's never apparently walked before. He, the other he, guy. He would he would quote plays. He would moonwalk. sing to them. He would play the cornet. I'm the Pied Piper of the Aggie. <laughs> <laughs> what an idiot! As soon as he won this, he announced that he would walk 275 <laughs> miles in 75 hours. I'm gonna come back here. And I'm, <laughs> I'm not gonna, gonna walk, walk 180 miles in 48 hours. I'm gonna walk 260 hours. I'm gonna come back and do what? <laughs> I'm, gonna do, I'm gonna do 200 miles in 400 hours. This time, though, he actually had real competition. His next competition would be Charles Ra- Rowell. Uh, Rowell was uh, one of the up-and-coming athletes in, in England, and this time he would be allowed to run if he wanted to. What? Yes. Just him or all of them? Anybody could run. It oh, was a, a, it was a, Call me old-fashioned. I believe it was a free as you go, I believe the phrase was. Free as you go. Free as you go. I'm I'm a purist when it comes to pedestrianism. Me too. I like a walk. I like a good walk. Well, there's a description about uh, from an Englishman that they say what separates American sports from British sports, and their description is that the uh, the simplicity of the rules. So, for instance, in cricket, uh, someone is out if the bowler knocks a wicket down. Very easy. No question that a wicket has has been knocked down. Mm-hmm. Right, and those are the two sticks. Those are the sticks behind, behind the, the batter. batter. But in American sports, you have an there's a guy who calls, Balls and he's strikes. not always right. Most of the time, he's wrong. And so this is their description of what separates American sports and British sports is the right. simplicity. But then we, of course, get into what the fuck all those fucking soccer rules. Yeah, and also uh, American blacks. <laughs> that's 
<laughs> That's what separates the sports, the yeah. sports between England and... Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, they also have black people in England. Yeah, but... <laughs> but it's not the same. It's not the same. <laughs> you psycho. I know I'm a psychopath, but it's not the same. They don't have the NFL over there. That's what support. Well, they do now. It's, it's oh, just ours. Yeah, but it's ours. <laughs> yeah. They do? I didn't know that. Yeah, but they play yeah, a game one, in London one, yeah, every one, couple one, of one, years. One, I know one, yeah. it's fucking a uh, racist, whatever. Is it racist? It's I don't know if it's racist. It's just weird. NFL in London. It's a little racist. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little bit racist. Tuesday, February 22nd, 1876, the 75-hour race begins. Raul sprints out to a quick lead. After three hours, he's four miles ahead. By Wednesday morning, he takes a three-hour break. And then later, a two-hour break at this midday. Is the, this is the novice. This, no, this is England's best, best athlete. Okay. By the end of, <laughs> Taking naps, got it. By the end of Wednesday, Weston is already 10 miles up. By Thursday, he's 28 up. On Friday, Raul was off the track for 12 hours, and Weston had already won. By then, he was singing and acting out and playing his cornet as he walked alone. The London Sporting Times said, It is a pity that so fine a performance should have been accompanied by so much rhododomante. What? Wait, rhododomante. That's it. Rhododomante is a boastful act. Huh. I mean, fuck, it's just some, this bad sports it's a writing. boastful way of yeah. shitting on a boastful act. <laughs> yeah. So wait, he's saying that the guy was too boastful about winning? Yeah. So it's like flipping bats kind of thing? Yeah. Okay. Fine. I mean, whatever. Um, I mean, celebrate winning. Who gives a shit? Who was the one taking naps? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> now, I, 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 uh, there's, 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 for for all of these races in England, Weston had a doctor who would uh, keep track of everything that went into his body and everything that came out. Ew. Oh hell yeah! Uh, benefits it. of a rubber suit. And the guy would, uh, I, for, uh, what, I forget his name, uh, P- Pavy. Uh, I forget his full name, but he would eventually I think become. Think it was like... actually pronounced Slavey. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 Doctor Slave. No, he went to Weston and said, "Can I study you while you do this?" Please. What? And this Please. guy would become one of like one of the experts, I believe, in the diabetes research in England or something. Uh, he, he, he was. This was uh, the beginning of his career almost. And this is, uh, he listed in stupefying detail to everything Weston ate and drank during his competitions. The first uh, 24 hours... Of, stupefying detail? That's what it says in the book. Fucking yikes. The first 24 hours of Weston's 75 hours walk. Distance walked 104 miles. Food consumed four ounces of meat, lean, from one chop. Two and a half ounces bread from dried toast. One and a quarter ounce Liebig's extract of meat. What? 16 ounce tin, uh, by, me- by measure, of brand essence of beef. Two ounce oatmeal made into gruel. Two pints, 14 ounce jelly. Three and a half ounce mixed tea, two and a half ounce coffee, eight and a half ounce sugar, one lemon, ten yolks of eggs, four ounce grape, four ounce prunes for making prune tea, eighteen ounce sea moss farina blanc marge. No, 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 you don't get to skip over that. <laughs> eighteen ounce sea moss farina blanc mange. I don't. What is it's, that? It's French for uh, uh, sea moss. Flour. Maybe. Uh, that yeah. sounds disgusting. Yeah. All of that. It sounds fermented. How, you highly. know how much essence they're eating? Oh uh, yeah, a can of meat essence, a can of mutton essence, yeah. uh, various jellies of meat, prune tea. Mm-hmm. Jesus, it's Christ. is this listing the stuff going in or coming out? This is stuff going in. Two and a half pints of milk. Stuff coming out. Maybe also published the results of his analysis of samples of Weston's urine collected during, before, and after competitions. Amber color and clear. Microscopic characters. A few crystals of uric acid. Oh God! Oh, well, now we're getting into my territory. <laughs> All right, let's get four into... whole turnips. <laughs> what? <laughs> but... A couple of worms. <laughs> the journal Lancet predicted his research would prove valuable in quote in reference to the food best adapted for armies on a long march and other engaging arduous labor. The feats of Weston may be looked upon an affordable and valuable opportunity of investigating the chemical phenomenon concerned in muscular That's action. That's fucking interesting, man. Yeah. That's fucking yeah. interesting. Yeah. Okay. All right. And, you know, don't waste an opportunity. Don't, don't waste taste it. Taste it. You got to taste, taste it. it. Taste it. That's exactly right, John mm-hmm. and Matt. The, I, I love when you bring in a little piss science. You yeah, know? I know you do. Now, did he keep it track of the shit coming out of his butthole? <laughs> he probably did, but they didn't. Uh, you know, I'm sorry. He probably didn't shit that much. You think? I mean, they had chamber pots in the tents by the, like, the, you know, they gave you, they would put up a tent you could sleep in, and they would have a chamber pot in it, but I don't know. I mean, it's just walking, I guess, you know? But he, but he probably wasn't eating enough to eventually, like, by the sixth day, to be shitting. Yeah, you know, you want to stay light on your feet, definitely. Right. Yeah, but it's all fucking mutton and shit. No, I'm mutton! I'm I mean, he probably mutton. had a, a huge-ass shit when he was done. In the prune tea, I mean, you. Yeah, the prune I mean, tea. You do want to get most of the shit. John's losing his shit right now. I'm <laughs> 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 I 
<laughs> that's very that's very good. Thank you. It makes up for my racist stuff. <laughs> 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 Please continue. <laughs> Ten days after, uh, so what? Weston uh, won this last match. Ten days after that, he uh, then attempts to break the 500 mile record in a six day walk. By now, he had walked over 500 miles in three races over the previous four weeks. He had a sprained knee. He was coughing constantly as he walked around <laughs> the track. After six days, he managed only 450 miles, but the crowd still was behind him. Over the four races of his time there. Over 200,000 tickets were sold. Oh, my God. Oh, holy Christ almighty. In six man. days? In, no, over these four races. Oh, and now this is oh. all England. This is in England. It's okay. the entire population of England. But there was a brief scandal. <gasps> One guy said, I think he was chewing coca leaves. Oh, hell Ooh. yeah, he is chewing. You gotta chop that shit up. I uh -huh. love mutton chop. <laughs> <laughs> he, meant, he meant to say, I love munching chop. <laughs> Now, Weston disputed this in a letter saying, I did that briefly, but I felt it didn't work and when, when I was training, and I did not do it then. I didn't yeah. inhale. And also then he said, but if I did, it wasn't a big deal. Yeah. So, who's to say? Who's to say? He was chopped up. I love it. I love that, too. Piss That's a very, very good. Piss. However, Piss. so Weston's over there in England. He's doing all this... You know, shit. <laughs> but a month later, eight, April 1876, O'Leary breaks Weston's 500-mile record in San Francisco. Fuck yes. Five days, 19 hours. 3,000 people are there to watch the finish. Right after coming from the mayor and denouncing all the Chinese immigrants, they leave that. They go to see O'Leary break the record. <laughs> it was a very busy week in San Francisco. <laughs> it sounds like it. <laughs> Quite a week. <laughs> Well, they're after ridding themselves of all the Chinamen. They're after to see your old friend, O'Leary. All right, Chang, you get to stepping. And Leary, you get to stepping. <laughs> I'll tell you something. I've been cruising for a nice young gay fella myself out here in the streets of San Francisco. And let me tell you, I found a few of them. <laughs> and more than one of them was a Chinaman. Uh, yeah, I think I'm going to like walking around the streets of San Francisco. Does anybody have any Coca. <laughs> <laughs> What's Weston doing? I send him a telegram. Where are all these American blacks I've been hearing about? <laughs> August 1876, O'Leary <laughs> attempts to best uh, the the 500 mile record inside a Manhattan roller rink, his own record now. But he had a cold and he drank too much champagne, trying to cool down. <laughs> <laughs> they had this thing, they had this idea back then that if you drank champagne, it would keep you awake and also cool you down. <laughs> That's the, the dumbest, dumbest thing yes. I've ever the heard in my life. Thing of like, they had trainers that would be like, you got to drink your champagne or you're not going to make it. That's like if you give if you give champagne to an eleven year old and be like, does this make you feel cool and energized? They would be like, no. I have I'm a headache and I'm a sleepy and I'm hammered and I don't have my motor functions and no, no to all of that. This is the Mountain Dew has gone bad. Yeah, yeah. twelve year olds gonna say, I hate champagne. Yeah, one glass. All right, a bottle, whatever. <laughs> I don't like the way it makes me feel the next really? day. Really. It's it's a it's, it's not a fun, headache. It, it, it's just it, a yeah. headache. It's kind of no, a headache. I'll, I'll take a couple of drinks, but I'm not gonna drink a whole fucking. It's bottle. also a subtle drunk. It creeps up on you, like you yes. don't you don't know you're getting drunk. Yeah, and then you're like you're like loose, but like you're Let's crazy. If you want to hear the importance of champagne bottles, listen to Connections Two on our page. Yeah, listen to Connections. So he uh, he he doesn't beat his record. He loses to his own record by three hours. But the seven thousand crowd, uh, seven thousand person crowd. Loved it anyway. The New York Times writes, They became perfectly wild with excitement. <laughs> One of the greatest feats ever witnessed by New York public. Huh. Just huh. walking 500 miles. Four days later, he sails to England. As soon as he gets off the boat, he challenges Weston to a six-day race. Winner gets 500 pounds and two-thirds of the gate. Loser gets a third of the gate. There's huh. so much gate and feats involved. It's like a double entendre of uh, yeah, orgy. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. Wow, I just really love it. That's really good. <laughs> are you talking about face or are you talking about face? Are you talking about gate or are you talking about gate? Now, do you mean the gate or the gate and the way I walk? Are you now, about... who's chopping what? Now, are you talking about me face and me fucking British knights? Now, are, the... are you talking about my fate that I'm destined to die one day? <laughs> Get your fucking fox straight. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, uh, they uh, they're back to the Aggie. I believe it is the Aggie. I can't remember. I don't know if I wrote it down. Too much. Um, 
O'Leary opens up a quick lead. He never gives it up once again. Weston, Hell no. On the fourth day, Weston once he gets as close as 16 miles, but that was it. Uh, when he saw he was beat, he retreated into his tent. Where uh, this uh, this man who I'm going to touch on in the Patreon, this man named Sir John Astley, when it, who had spent a put a bunch of money on Weston, goes into his tent and demands that he he gets out there and work and finish it. Get out there and walk. Upon which Weston started crying. <laughs> I've had and, so much and, champagne. And Astley <laughs> says, "There's not a thing you can do with a man whose whose eyes are piping." Yes. Whose eyes are piping? I don't know why I used an Irish accent. He was very much not Irish. That's funny, though. There's nothing you can do with a man whose eyes are piping. Uh Uh-huh. I'm piping! (laughs) Ooh, I'm piping! (laughs) Don't cry. You can't cry. There's no crying and walking! Yeah, there's no crying in pedestrianism. At 6 p.m. on the final day, 10,000 people were there to watch. By 9 p.m., 20,000 people were there to watch. Around then, Weston concedes. O'Leary passes out in his tent, so Weston has the whole drink to himself, so he spends two hours doing tricks, and even one lap, he pushes a roller along the track to the amusement of the audience. <laughs> I'll even sweep up a bit! <laughs> <laughs> no charge! Of course. Total attendance was 80,000 people. Jesus fucking Christ. O'Leary makes $14,000 from it, about $280,000 today. Uh, he would struggle to walk for the next few days, but meanwhile, Weston, the next day, he, him and Sir John Ashley went to church. He was perfectly fine. Oh, my God. Yeah. Well, who's in it? Who's in it to win it? Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah exactly. O'Leary? Yeah. Who's in a bath of brandy? <laughs> yeah. Or this other jackass in church jumping around. praying for mediocrity? <laughs> <laughs> well, John, you say that. second best. <laughs> you say that, but we'll get, we'll get back to that. Now, Sir John Astley was swept up with pedestrianism. He was a noted gambler and, uh, and uh, sportsman. Among, uh, whatever, his time. (laughs) And he decided that he would start his own race. Mm. 1878, a six-day race to determine long-distance champion of the world. Winner gets 500 pounds, second gets 100, third gets 50. Anyone who walks 450 miles gets their $10 stake back and a $10 bonus. Plus, the winner gets the newly invented, coveted, bejeweled, silver and gold, five-pound, four-foot-long Astley belt with their name engraved on it. And if you win it three times in a row, you get to keep it. I'm coming for that belt, Ashley. <laughs> That's it. Oh, my God. It's engraved. It's bejeweled. It's bedazzled. Well, I'll tell you what. I'm going to razzle-dazzle my way all the way to the top of this fucking rink. <laughs> you use dazzle as a verb. <laughs> when razzle-dazzle. At the, dazzle. at the beginning of the show, you made fun of us for using it <laughs> as a verb. Well, I've realized the error of my words. Really I'm glad you come around. Uh, That's I've, very I've, good, I've, I've realized, uh, It's been a long like, journey for you, man. Yeah, I've walked 500 miles, and I will walk 500 more. <laughs> That's exactly right. March 18th, 1878, the first ever Astley Belt. It is O'Leary. Weston turns it down because he can't. He's already lost all his money. He can't afford the ten pound steak. Are you fucking shitting me? No, he said he he was quoting. Uh, I forget what this. He was quoting. He, he would later quote some actor and some uh, some character in some play saying, "Always spend, always spend uh, your uh, your uh, above your or was it? Always spend your income and ten percent above it." And so that's what Jesus. he. Jesus. He was always very bad at. It. Uh, it was so be, it became O'Leary and sixteen British men. And O'Leary and the Americans were supposed to have the inside track and the British would have the outside track. O'Leary or Weston? O'Leary. Just O'Leary himself. It was supposed to be him and Weston, but Weston couldn't make it. So Weston outspent, you're saying. Weston couldn't do it. Yes, I say O'Leary. You did. Apologies. Weston did. Weston He's said, a maniac. Spend O'Leary 10% never more. had a problem. Okay. Yeah. O- 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 he was a frugal man. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I can barely afford me toenails. <laughs> <laughs> They're just so goddamn delicious. <laughs> <laughs> I can't help but eat them. <laughs> so the, the race was O'Leary and 16 British men. Uh, and they were all ra- the British guys were all on the same track. O'Leary was on the inside track, uh, and some of the notable British men. I'll just I'm, I'm just going to read one. There's I mean there's a couple. William Gentleman was one of them. His nickname was Corky because <laughs> he was 46 and five foot four. Huh. There was Henry Vaughn who was a carpenter, a real clean made and thoroughly thoroughly respectable man. Ashley said, but the uh, the, the the biggest uh, trouble was Henry Blower Brown. A brickmaker who had an early dis- er- early distinguished himself by the rapid manner he trundled his barrow of bricks to the kiln and back for another load. Hmm. Oh, he was weight training. Yeah. He was resistance training. 
Heavy loads. 6,000 people would attend uh, every day for the first three days, and there would be more than 6,000 for the last three days, over to 10 and 15, 20. Jesus. O'Leary would win this one, and he would take the first Astley belt. And kind of, not a, pretty much a route. No one had really, uh, you know, none of these guys had, had been able to do it like he had. Oh. Yeah. Um, but also, in the winter of 1878, uh, something happened that uh, no one really thought would happen. Someone named Ada Anderson walked 2,700 quarter miles in 2,700 quarter hours. That's 675 hours. Was this the lady? Yes. <gasps> a woman oh my dear God. became... A famous pedestrian. <gasps> My whole worldview is going to shit. Jesus Christ. I thought only men were the best. With walkers. the nice, with the nice high arches. No, I mean, was uh, she wearing heels? Was she it would, because of her wide hips. She would dress up a lot between each walk. She would change clothes and come Shut out, up. and she would sing and play the piano, and this, then she would is go she had up. A piano? That she walked around. Would, it was she would walk a hot. quarter mile in the in a, in a, in a venue. And then when she was done, she would play the piano and sing, talk to the crowd, take questions, Whoa. change her outfit, come out again. Every 15 minutes for, for 675 hours, wow. she would walk a quarter mile. Wow. 175? And from this, she made $7,000, about $162,000 today. It's worth it. Jesus Christ. And she became a, a sensation all across the United States Cock for walking. the walk. Yeah. Whoa. Uh, then in Chicago... Exilda La Chapelle, one of the greatest names I've ever heard. She walked three thousand quarter miles in three thousand quarter hours, and suddenly people were saying, "People were saying, you know, women." The Supreme Court had just ruled that women could not argue cases before the Supreme Court, r right when this was happening. Ah. And so some people were saying, "Well, they're walking now. Yeah. Soon they'll be able to go in front of the Supreme Court." Soon they'll yeah, be running mm. the household. I bet they can even climb steps. <laughs> <laughs> Thing we've got a glass ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> and in March of 19, 1879, a woman's six-day race was held for a thousand dollars, but none of they weren't allowed to show any shapely limbs. Uh -huh. So they yeah, had to yeah, wear yeah, like put this away. the worst outfits possible. Right. Trash uh, bags. <laughs> <laughs> Rubber trash bags. There's like a Missy Elliott video in it. Oh my god. <laughs> there, there, there were 18 women. Uh, Ada Anderson was not one of them. Uh, that Most of them were young immigrants. Few were middle-aged. Yeah, all dressed like Slimer. A couple were... <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. A couple were society what? ladies. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Some of them were clearly unprepared for the rigors of six-day walking. Uh, one retired after an hour. Two others were hospitalized during the race, including one who was said to, quote, said to have lost her mind. She was hysterical. Uh, oh, God. And the, she needed a doctor to get finger-banged real quick. Well, one of the problems with these races is that men would show up as spectators and heckle the women the entire time. Of course. I'll tell you, I'll tell you what's course. wrong with the races. <laughs> oh, <boy>. <laughs> 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 uh, that you know, I totally can picture a bunch of dudes showing up to watch women. Oh, forget about it. Yeah. What, they, they oh, like, now you walk. I got you. You can walk over here. Oh, I guess you can walk now too. Oh, huh? uh, what's next? <laughs> yeah. Thinking. Yeah. It's Pretty almost much. like you've been running for men for uh, fucking uh, millennia. Five thousand years. <laughs> <laughs> We're headed in a hurry <laughs> away from you. <laughs> Oh, well, all right. Fuck you, <laughs> <laughs> bitch. <laughs> that's a that's a wild turn. That's a wild yes. ass turn in the first sport in America. Yep. Pedestrianism right. still not integrated <laughs> though, huh? We're getting there. Oh, 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 I love it. 1879, Astley wanted his belt back. This Irishman had taken it. So he decide, Astley decides he's going to train that Charles Rowell guy. And so he, he trains him. He says one day Rowell comes over and he runs, uh, he runs like 10 miles. And he's like, well, all right, great. This guy's good. That's all it took. He can run. <laughs> That's that. And so March 1879, New York's brand new Gilmore Garden. This would be the garden that would... Uh, this was the thing that took over from P.T. Barnum's circus tent. 
and then it would be taken over by Madison Square, and then Madison Square 2, and then Madison Square 3, and I think what we have now is Madison Square 4. It's a hyper Madison yes. Square. Mm. The third Astley belt was held in this Gilmore Garden, and it was at that time the biggest sporting event in the world. Three hours before the race, the doors were open, and the crowd started coming in. By race time, the crowd was so large that ticket takers were having trouble getting them in quickly enough. The lines backed up. People outside were worrying they would miss the start. When they began to get rowdy, the police captain ordered the doors closed. I'm going to talk about that police captain. His name is Alexander Williams. That'll be a Patreon. The people outside started uh, rioting when they closed the doors. They rioted so so much at 1.05 in the morning that they broke the doors down and started streaming in. Yeah. Police captain Alexander Williams, then him and his boys, then just wildly beat anybody they could find. <laughs> <laughs> Whether you paid or not, yes. you were getting an ass whipping. Yes. Fuck them up! They ruined it for you, Pettigas! Yes. <laughs> and now you're all in big, big Only trouble. It takes one bad apple. <laughs> Jesus Christ, I've love... been waiting all night for this! <laughs> Truth be told, I'd actually like to whip the paying customers more. <laughs> if I, if I must be honest now. <laughs> there, there is a story of someone running under the track and. Williams then goes into the crowd, finds a man sitting down, and beats him. <laughs> at these at these walking events, do they get like the big titted lady running, walking onto the track to like give a big hug and kiss? Like, well, see, part of the problem games? is when for the Gilmore Garden, the crowd uh, there was they were allowed on the inner circle, and so sometimes people would cross the track to go watch from the inner circle. Oh, like in NASCAR. Yes. Weird. And there were times where. They got so packed there were pickpockets and one of the runner one of the walkers was hit by a, a pickpocket running from a man he had pickpocketed. Oh my god. Interference. There's no, no running around the track. <laughs> this, this is how yeah. this is the rules. You gotta throw a flag. <laughs> so in this race after five hours, uh Raul... the pickpocketed the pedestrian. <laughs> pickpocketed the pedestrian. After, after five hours, Raul... He's running towards that whore over there in little, the middle. Little lady got mutilated late last night. <laughs> Where was it, London again? Yeah. It's, where was it, London again? After five hours, Raul had gone 30 miles, O'Leary 27, and this new man, John Enos, had gone 26. John Enos, again, will be touched on the Patreon. John Enos... <laughs> John Enos uh, uh, might hold the record for most people saved from drowning by a non-lifeguard. Huh? Yeah, there well, once was a man named John Enos. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, were they drowning on his cock? <laughs> it was a gagging. <laughs> You're drowning, you dumb fuck! I'll save you. It's like You're the, it's like the Please. arsonist, the arsonist that are always saving yeah, people yeah, from yeah, fires. Yeah. <laughs> this guy saved all these people from drowning. Yeah, my fucking rig. <laughs> 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 it's not it's not a pool noodle, you fucking idiot. Grab Jesus onto Christ, me. you moron, you nearly drowned. Grab onto me, cock, you save your life. <laughs> <laughs> Come on me if you want to live. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, I'm very, stupid. I say dumb be. stuff all the time. Very Racist, dumb. sexist, misogynistic. <laughs> I'm fucking dumb. <laughs> <laughs> so easy. Just kidding. I'm very, very smart. Absolutely. You're a genius. <laughs> I know how to walk. <laughs> and chew gum. <laughs> well, I tried to see a Terminator do that. <laughs> <laughs> I know how to walk and chew coca. Chew <laughs> gum? Chew gum. What? what? <laughs> he said chew coca. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Lee, I chew coca. <laughs> hey, nice. Very nice. Oh. <laughs> Matt, what are we looking at here, time-wise? I, I, I want to take a break. I'm sorry. No, no, I was saying I don't want to make it two parts, but I guess I've, we probably should. Okay. And we'll just we'll just we'll just add some shit for the other one in case it doesn't go long enough. Okay. Do you want to do you yeah, want to yeah. say something to to wrap it up? Um, mm. To hear the thrilling conclusion to the next 20 years of pedestrianism, <laughs> to, 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 tune in next week. Well, I mean, to uh, hear Aaron's theories on American <laughs> race relations. Yeah. Just, the superior walker. The superior African American walkers. Get to stepping. It's actually the Skywalkers would actually take over the whole game. <laughs> I am going to say good night. Matt, I love this profile. This is very stupid. Thank you. Yes, oh, I God. love all of you listening. Thank you so 
so much. My name is John Fahey. My name is Aaron Pita. Matt Russo. Good night, everybody. We love you. Good night. Starbrands Avenue, a, podca <clears throat> a podcast network.